Hey folks, Jack here with a quick Bitcoin video. And if you read the title of the video before you click play, then you know that we're going to talk about how Bitcoin mining is absolutely not uh, really in any way solving complex math problems. In fact, it's, it's, it's not even math. Uh, well, precipitated this video, I ran a poll on X. And in that poll, I simply asked this question is, is it very accurate? And I tried to like, I tried to help you get the right answer. Is it very accurate to say that Bitcoin is, quote, solving complex math problems with computers, end quote? Answer will be published tomorrow when the poll is closed. There's like an hour left in the poll, but we're not going to have any major changes. We've got 49% basically, and I'm rounding them off. 49% say yes, it is. Uh, about 25% say it's not. And 26% are honest. And say, I, I don't really know. The answer is it's not. And, and I'm going to give you a couple resources here. Uh, one's going to be this article that you can read at your leisure uh, that basically says Bitcoin mining is not solving complex math problems. Beginner's guide. Bitcoin mining and difficulty adjustments explained in non-technical terms using a simple dice analogy. And in this article, if you read it, the author will talk about if, if you had a 1,000 side dice, like you had a huge die with a thousand different numbers can come up between one and one in a hundred, uh, one in a thousand. And you had to roll, let's say, a number lower than 10. Well, that could take a long time. You could always get lucky in the first time you threw it, you got a one, but it would take a, a considerable long time, especially if you did it over and over and over and over again. And every time, you know, you check a box every time you get a number lower than 10. And, and it is all, honestly a lower number than a set number in the Bitcoin mining algorithm that you're trying to hit. Well, that's not math. If you go play, uh, a dice game where you're just rolling dice and trying to hit a certain number higher or lower than a certain number. You, the only math you're doing is right at the end, either it was or it wasn't. Is this number greater or less than? And that's not a complex math problem at all. And that's why I use the word very accurate and complex math problem in the thing, because I guess you could try to say there's math at the end, even though the mining rig's not the one doing the math. It's just doing the dice rolling. And I also have a video where I explain this, and I used a SHA-256 simulator, and I, in real time, showed what it looks like. That was episode two of the Bitcoin Breakout, the fundamental series. And I also have a link in the video notes to that article and to the video that I where I did that demonstration. And that link is set to go straight, so you don't have to sit through an hour and a half long podcast. It's just that part. It's about a minute before I actually show it. So there's some context and you look at it. But I wanted to add this video to my answer because I know there's going to be some very, very, very upset people uh, when I say, no, Bitcoin mining is not complex math problems being solved by computers. That's not what it is. Uh, even ChatGPT will tell you that. And it's a very simple reason. For a very long time, your experts have come on, you know, MSNBC Money and Fox Business and all that and said what? This is where computers solve very complex math problems, but it's not. And it's not, I can explain it very, very simply. This is done with an input and an output with something in the center called a nonce, and the nonce is the variable. Otherwise, you could just make a list of low of inputs that created low, very low numbers, and you could rig the game and have your rigs only throw out things that make low numbers. By changing the nonce, the variable in the center, uh, that's generated as each new block starts getting made, you change what the output will be. But SHA-256 hashing is a one-way process. So if I took an apple and orange and a banana and cut a couple pieces out of them all and threw them in a neutral blender and dumped a cup of cream and a handful of ice cubes in there and run that blender and make you a smoothie, it is what it is and you know what it came from. But you can't go the other direction. You can't separate it back out and make it an orange and a banana and a cup of cream and some, it won't go backwards. It only goes one direction. Math is math because it goes both directions. And I can explain it really, really simply. If we have a problem, four plus five equals, most of you are smart enough. Your brain instantly said nine. Well, if I don't give you the four, I only give you the plus, the five, the equals and the nine, you can figure out the five. That's why people do that are not that smart do really well at math until you get to really super advanced math. 
as long as they're a person that tries, pays attention, and complies with what they're told to do. Because math works on a set of rules. And if you're doing math on a test, you can actually check your answer before you go to the next one. Because if the answer worked this way, then you should be able to work the answer the other direction. You can always check your work. That, you know, X plus four equals nine. It could be a five. It could be a four and a one. X could be a four plus one, depending on the variables you allow into the problem. But any way you do it, there's a five there. There's a total of five. Some people, I, I, I had comments that math is a human construct. It's a human construct in that we explain it a certain way. But there are, if there are two things, there are two things. And if there's two more, there's four things. It's not a human construct. It, it, it's, it, it's a physical law. Now, the word we use, two, we could use the word two or dose, right? Or so we could make up our own language. We use whatever the fucking Klingon word is for, for two to describe two. But two is two, and it's universal. And that means that we have been able to communicate using mathematics for as long as we've understood mathematics, as long as we've assigned values to things. It's a universal language that we can communicate with. And that's why we use mathematics when we even try to communicate with maybe there's extraterrestrials out there. So the messages that we send are using mathematics to communicate. OK, uh, and that's math because it goes in both directions. The reason Bitcoin mining can't be math is I can give you the output and the nonce and you can't give me the input. There's no way to do that. If it was math, you actually could sort of, again, like rig the game. You could figure things out in advance. It's a total random gamble. So now go back to the, the article with the dice, the thousand dice. If you get one person and they have to hit, let's say, a number lower than 20, and you give them a thousand, big about size of a, base, or a, a beach ball, thousand-sided die. I don't even know how you would do that, but just say you could do it. Or you give them a random number generator. Every time you push a button, it randomly generates a number between one and a thousand right? And they got to be under 20. It's going to take them a long time. If you had 100 people all pushing the button at the same time, like a bunch of old ladies gambling away their uh, social security check on slot machines, you've seen those videos, bam, 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 right? Just flying through the money, then it would happen sooner because the total number of attempts would be higher. That's mining. That's all that it is. It's not math. Math goes two directions. Mining is a hashing action. And another way you can think about it, if this helps, if it's still difficult for you to understand, if you have a password to your account, and I know your username, it doesn't really do me any good. If I have a computer and there's nothing that prevents brute force, I can just have this computer just start throwing guesses at your password, right? And if I do it long enough, I'll get your password. Every alphanumeric character, whatever, you know, it's hard. But if I have a fast enough computer and nothing says, hey, after this many attempts, turn it off, I can brute force attack your passwords. And that's what we're doing here. You have a known and you, you're trying to find the other variable. And because of words like variable, it sounds very mathematical. So I'm not even crapping on these people that say this stuff, because if you go just surface level in, investigate this, you'll come away absolutely convinced. But I want to tell you the bigger reason I did this. To reinforce how easy it is to program the human mind, I'm running a series of polls uh, this week that will be used in a podcast episode next week, uh, how we become convinced of things like the boiling frog analogy or how many spaces go after a period or what have you. These are things that we have been told over and over again. And once we accept them, it becomes very difficult, even when presented with incontrovertible evidence to the contrary, that we were wrong. Or it's easier to fool someone than to convince them that they've been fooled. If you have believed that Bitcoin mining is, is solving math problems, you've been fooled. Now, it's your choice as to whether or not you accept the fact that you have been fooled. I'll catch you again with another video later.